Good evening. I'm Jonathan Schechter, President of the Foundation for Jewish Philanthropies. And along with my dear friend and partner in serving Jewish Buffalo, Shelley Yellen, President of the Buffalo Jewish Federation, we welcome you to this special celebration celebrating the future of Jewish Buffalo. Tonight is a first, the first time Federation and Foundation have come together for their respective annual meetings. Federation's 118th and the Foundation's 111th. We will also celebrate our Life and Legacy Buffalo Initiative, a joint program being led by our organizations. Like last year, tonight's event is being streamed to you in the safety of your homes. Unlike last year, we are live from Buffalo, New York, bringing what we hope will become an annual event celebrating the Foundation, the Federation, our community leaders, and Jewish Buffalo's Life and Legacy Initiative. In the past few years, the Foundation, the Federation, our community agencies, and synagogues have seized the opportunity to work more closely together than ever. You can read more about this collaboration in the most comprehensive Foundation impact report we've ever published. This report will be emailed out this week, so keep an eye out in your inbox. And please visit the Foundation's website at jewishphilanthropies.org to view it online. As long as I have been a community volunteer and as a past officer of the Buffalo Jewish Federation, the one need every agency has requested over and over again was assistance with endowed and legacy giving. Now, with the Life and Legacy Buffalo Initiative, we can fill that void. It is the most exciting program our community has seen in the past 50 years and is the most rewarding Jewish community experience of my life. We are excited to tell you more about it tonight. Please join me in welcoming my friend Shelly Ellen, president of the Buffalo Jewish Federation. Thank you, Jonathan. Our program will also provide an opportunity to honor this year's Emerging Leadership Awardees, Meredith Levin and Ezra Rich, and Foundation's Leadership Awardee, David Firestein. We are also excited to be streaming from Temple Beth Zion's Sisterhood Chapel, and we are grateful to the TBC leadership for welcoming us and Rob Rothkopf. Thank you, Rob and Candlelight Productions, for your video expertise. And as we conclude the Festival of Hanukkah, I'm honored to invite Temple Beth Zion's interim rabbi, Sherem Sobel, to share words of Torah with us. Thank you, Jonathan and Shelley, Rob and Irv, and all of you who dedicate yourselves, either professionally or as volunteers, to Buffalo Jewish Federation and the Foundation for Jewish Philanthropies. I would also like to wish a hearty mazal tov to those who are receiving honors this evening and to all who are being installed as new board members. As we are taught, lo alecha hamlacha ligmor, it is not upon us to complete the work, neither are we free to turn away from it. The sun set on the last day of Hanukkah as we begin this meeting. Last night, we lit all eight Hanukkah candles, and our homes were filled with many sparks of light, illuminating the darkness. Parshat Vayigash, our Torah portion for this week, is always read as we are concluding the festival of Hanukkah. And we are now in the middle of the Joseph story. Joseph has ridden from, risen from an unwilling immigrant from Israel to Egypt and is second in command only to Pharaoh himself. And he saved Egypt from seven years of famine. 
He helped welcome refugees from other countries who were suffering from hunger, from starvation, including his own brothers who were in dire need of food. Joseph is a dreamer, a visionary, a wise man. Elie Wiesel refers to him as a tzaddik, a righteous person. Why? Because any one of us can have dreams. Any one of us can be visionary. Any one of us can be wise. But Joseph was able to turn his vision and his dreams into a living reality that bettered the lives of so many people around him. He was able to do so by forgiving the past and by moving forward to an enlightened future, engaging others in his holy work and sharing his light with those around him. Joseph was the epitome of strength, courage, fortitude, and faith. And at the time, Joseph and Egypt were the beacons of light for all in that region. And the story of Hanukkah, which, we're just, which we've just concluded, is also about courage, resilience, fortitude, and faith. So we lit our Hanukkiot as that beacon of light for all to remind us that we too can be like Joseph, like the early Maccabees, encouraging others to join us in our endeavors. The missions of the Buffalo Jewish Federation and the Foundation for Jewish Philanthropies are all about lighting sparks that serve as beacons of light for those around us. And all of you who dedicate your time, your efforts, and your energy do so with the notion that we are all God's children. We are all created with Selim Elohim in the image of God. The lessons of our past and the lessons in the Torah remind us that if we kindle one spark, that spark can ignite multiple flames and create a roaring fire that will light up even the darkest night. And if we save one life, it is as if we have saved an entire world. So yasher koach to all of you who are engaged in lighting these sparks. Your good work is holy work, inspiring each and every one of us. This season of light and sparks is about coaxing miracles. And Joseph taught us that miracles don't happen out of nowhere, that we create our own miracles when we work together for sacred purpose like the good work that you are doing. So I conclude with this poem of inspiration, this poem of light by Alden Solovey, called Coaxing Miracles. Miracles can start out as tiny things, specks of God's love floating all around us, shimmering at a frequency just beyond human sight. But when, like a dewdrop catching sunshine, a miracle enters light from heaven, it shines briefly like a firefly to remind you that you are not alone. Follow the light, from the, for the specks of the divine can be coaxed into your heart, where they will shine brilliant, radiant, and forever. Thank you. Pastor Koa, thank you, Rabbi Solo, for your inspiring words. That was beautiful. I'm now happy to introduce Allison Keene and Howard Rosenhock, chairs of the Life and Legacy at Buffalo Initiative, to prov provide us with an update on our progress to date and to introduce tonight's video montage. Thank you, Jonathan and Shelley, for your passionate leadership and Rabbi Sobel for your inspiring words. Friends, in the Talmud we read, as my forefathers planted these carob trees for me, so too I plant for my children. This is the essence of life and legacy, a four-year partnership with the Harold Grinspoon Foundation that promotes after-lifetime giving to benefit Jewish Buffalo. I'm honored to be chairing the Federation's Life and Legacy Committee. 
We, here in Buffalo, were selected last spring to join more than 70 other communities across North America in this Jewish Legacy Giving Initiative. We, that initiative has secured to date more than 30,000 permanently endowed commitments amounting to more than a billion dollars. The four-year Life and Legacy program provides coaching, training, resources to ensure that a culture of philanthropy, yes, a culture of philanthropy and legacy giving becomes an integral part of our network of organizations and agencies. Together, the Foundation for Jewish Philanthropies and the Buffalo Jewish Federation, with guidance and support from the Harold Grinspoon Foundation, are committed to helping secure the future of Jewish Buffalo. Allison? Hi, I'm Allison Keen, Chair of the Development Committee for the Foundation for Jewish Philanthropies. For me, philanthropy is a family affair. In speaking with my family, it warmed my heart to learn how my mother and our children share the same ideals that have guided my life. For us, the Life and Legacy at Buffalo Initiative is a multi-generational commitment to our community. In speaking with my husband, Kevin, it seemed so logical that when planning for the transfer of assets after our death, that we'll certainly think of our children, but we'll also consider our extended family, friends, neighbors, and our community, and our favorite charitable causes. The Life and Legacy Program has educated us on the need and opportunity to endow our community for generations to come and over the next four years, this program has the capacity to create a new culture of philanthropy. I believe that this is the most exciting project undertaken by our community in the past 50 years, and I'm honored and gratified by the opportunity to be involved. In a few moments, we will share a moving video of individuals and families, including Howard's, who have already made their legacy commitments. Before we do so, I want to express our thanks to the following organizations, in addition to Federation and Foundation, that are participating in Life and Legacy. Center for Jewish Life, Congregation Shir Shalom, Hillel of Buffalo, Jewish Community Center of Greater Buffalo, Jewish Discovery Center, Jewish Family Services of Western New York, Kadima Scholars, Temple Beth Zedek, and Temple and Beth Zion. I am also delighted to share that as of today, we have received 83 legacy commitments from 37 donors, translating to an estimated dollar amount of over 3.9 million. We are grateful to Brenda Feldstein for producing this video this evening that briefly shares the legacy stories of several Jewish Buffalonians who have led by example and have already made their legacy commitments. They include Sarah, Rabbi Sarah and Ezra Rich, Esther Corderon, the Kester and Rosenhawk families, Gretchen Gross, and David Firestein, who was the first to make the legacy, a legacy commitment through this initiative and is being awarded with the Foundation's Leadership Endowment Award. Take a look. I remember the first time that we came to Buffalo as a family uh, with the then two girls, we now also have Naomi, and showing them the house for the first time. It was all very brand new and there was a sense of nervousness. And then we went to um, Beth Sedek and the girls were invited up to the, the Bima and it just was um, feeling like that we were at home and the girls could have a, a home. They're very fortunate that they have uh, more bubbies and zadies than most. <laughs> I grew up in Maryland and my family went to services every Friday night, really didn't miss a week. That community where I was raised is the one that um, helped me love Judaism so much and get to start being a leader, you know, when I was in high school. And it was in that sanctuary where I decided I wanted to become a rabbi during high holiday services, actually. I'm just feeling very inspired. You know, and so when we bring our kids to Beth Sedek every week, um, and they get to go up and, you know, at the end to sing a Don Alam, that just feels like the next link in the chain for us, and that they're having that same experience of being embraced and accepted and loved by a Jewish community. 
we hope for the best. Um, we don't know what life will bring, um, but it feels right to make this commitment now to participate in what the community is doing. And we really hope that other people in our generation will consider it too. I expect there to be a strong Hillel of all the Jewish college students who will continue to come to UB and all the local colleges that they'll find community when they get there. And that our children and their friends will be emerging as the next leaders, you know, and they'll be the ones who are running these programs and um, serving on boards and things like that. And that, um, that this is a community that makes room for those new ideas and really embraces them. And that life and legacy is a down payment of sorts on that future trajectory of Jewish community here in Buffalo. So I grew up in a small city in Michigan, and there was a very small Jewish community there, but very, very tight-knit. There was only one synagogue, and I went to Sunday school all the way through, and with the same group of kids um, all the way through to high school, really. And my mom was always really involved in our synagogue. She helped with a lot of the cooking and a lot of the events and, and parties and different things that, that were planned there, which was nice. We first moved to Buffalo, um, one of the very first things that we did was enroll Caroline's at the JCC for pre-K. So that's been a huge influence in her life, really through her formative years. And I always loved the idea that she could be at the JCC learning those traditions and seeing that in a group setting, not just at home, which was really, really nice. Um, and we also enrolled her in Sunday school when she turned five. Being not really a newcomer to Buffalo, but somebody who's not from here, it was so nice to be able to connect with some of the Jewish institutions here immediately, to connect with the JCC, to connect with our temple right away. And I think that in my case, I want to ensure that those institutions that have been in Buffalo for so long and have welcomed people from outside of the community and also served as a wonderful, you know, way for the local community to all connect together, that those institutions continue on for Caroline's generation and beyond. My parents were both Holocaust survivors. This is the book that my father wrote. It's his memoirs from his time growing up in Germany and in Sweden and then coming to America. I have a strong sense of loyalty being a Jew and belonging to the Jewish people. I am not a believer in the Jewish religion's many rules and laws, but try and follow its ethical and moral concepts. We like to keep up some of its traditions and observe its holidays. And I think that goes for us too. We are not super religious, but feel very much a part of the Jewish tradition, and it's an important part of our lives. So when the Life and Legacy program started, you know, we wanted to make a commitment ourselves, but I also talked to my father, because he is generous. I said, can you give to this program in Buffalo, where of course you don't live, he still, he still lives in Los Angeles, so we actually have a commitment from both him and from us. You grew up hearing about how even just little things to help other people can really make a really huge difference in their lives. And it might not be that big of a thing to you, but it can make all the difference for the other person. There was the Yom HaShoah. She was very little. She didn't want to go. And then I said to her, no, we are leaving at 10 o'clock. You can stay home. You're old enough to choose. But if we don't remember those children who died, then who will? And I went in the kitchen and I prayed. And sure enough, at 10 o'clock, there she stood in her prettiest dress, ready to go. I'm getting married later this year, and I think for me, 
is keeping the Jewish community very active and um, around in Buffalo in particular is very important to me because I plan to hopefully have a family soon and begin that in the next few years and I want to raise my family in Jewish Buffalo the way me and my sister were raised and to be able to go to synagogue, to go to different organizations like PJ Library and PJ Our Way and to be able to meet other Jewish peers and get that sense of identity in their own lives and feel like they are part of this really wonderful community. It's just three years after Valerie passed away. And um, to uh, fulfill our dream, um, uh, I've made our commitment uh, to uh, Kadima TBZ and Federation. My, my hopes are uh, um, the, the, the hopes of uh, every family. A bat mitzvah for each of them, standing under the chuppah, and uh, having children of their own. And at the heart of that, if we're lucky enough that they'll be in Buffalo too, having strong Buffalo institutions. And that's what life and legacy is all about. We dream of our girls growing up as proud Jews, as realizing the gift that is being Jewish, to know um, where they come from and, and um, how being Jewish has affected them. I really believe the Life and Legacy program is a huge opportunity for Jewish Buffalo to really educate people on what legacy giving is and how to make an impact for, for such a long period of time on, on the institutions that are most important. And Kadima is that for our family. Both both Gabby and I graduated from Kadima and it had an incredible profound impact on, on our lives and we know and, and hope it will for our kids and for so many other kids um, in Jewish Buffalo and who haven't even arrived in Jewish Buffalo. I want to be with my girls, my father and my brother, my sister-in-law and my last of my family. And it's important that we understand where we came from. It's important that we connect with Israel. We want to make sure they're there for these two, our grandchildren, and for uh, uh, children all over, over Buffalo. And uh, so I'm honored that uh, I've just uh, signed my uh, letter of intent. Well, actually, I was not comfortable being Jewish when I was growing up. And it really wasn't until I met Gord in my 30s that it, I felt like I had come home. Um, he and his family were very involved with the community, and it was kind of a gross joke. They'd say, we're afraid not to give to the community. The community's been so good to us. We have to continue doing this. And I thought, if I'm going to spend time with them, I better get involved too. So it kind of started that way. And then I found my own way to some of my favorites. Um, the JCC, I've been involved with a long time with early childhood education and camp most recently. Like I'm very proud to wear my Lion of Judah. And for the Life and Legacies program, I've um, endowed my gift. So that the Federation can continue to do all the incredibly wonderful projects that we do here in Buffalo and in Israel and across the world, really. We're doing important work. <laughs> and um, it, it, um, it also brings up a lot of memories. <sighs> and it's part of life, you know. Um, um, death is part of life, but it doesn't have to be the end of something. And, um, you know, talking about Gord and, and some of the things he did and some of the things I've done, I'm 
hoping that I can help to instill the traditions that have been started from Gord's family. And yes, traditions may change, but to understand the deep values of kindness, of community, um, remembering who we are, remembering what the Jewish people have gone through to get here. We must remember that to, and, and to share that with others to move forward. Um, and it's who we should be. It's who I am. Thank you, Brenda, for bringing these stories to life. And thank you, Howard and Allison, for leading us with such passion and dedication. We will now begin the brief business portion of our meeting, which will be followed by our award ceremony. On behalf of this year's nominating committee chair, Stephen Weiss, the following individuals, in accordance with the Constitution and the revised bylaws of the Buffalo Jewish Federation, have been nominated to serve a three-year term as at-large members of the Board of Governors beginning January 1st, 2022. Corey Auerbach, Meredith Levin, Ken Schumann, and Amelda Wyman. The following people are nominated for a second three-year term as returning members of the Board of Governors beginning January 1st, 2022. Jeff Blum, Iris Danziger, Jeff Katz, and Harvey Sanders. Laura Wexler is nominated to fill an unexpired two-year ter two term beginning January 1st, 2022. And Ken Dauber is nominated to fill an unexpired one-year term beginning January 1st, 2022. Congratulations to all our Board of Governors. I would also like to recognize Steve Honor, our only outgoing governor who has completed his term of service. We are grateful to Steve for his commitment to Federation and his many contributions to strengthen Jewish Buffalo. We will be sending you a special gift early next month. I am now pleased to invite Ezra Rich, a member of the nominating committee, to present the slate of officers. Thank you, Shelley. The following officers have been recommended by the nominating committee as follows. President, Shelley Yellen. Vice President, Sean Fryer. Vice President, Risa Kulik. Treasurer, Marjorie Bryan. Secretary, Ellen Weiss. And immediate past president, Leslie Kramer. Thank you, Ezra. And don't go too far away. We are delighted this year to be presenting our Emerging Leadership Awards, an honor that has been recognizing emerging leaders who have demonstrate a commitment to the growth and sustainability of our vibrant and caring Jewish Buffalo since 1964. But before I bring up Alan Cooperman and Brenda Feldstein, last year's winners to present the awards, I want to note that we will not be presenting the Cantor Professional Award or the Ann Holland Cohn Award this year and look forward to having those awards presented again next year when we are able to all safely gather in person. And now I invite Brenda to speak. It is my honor and great pleasure to announce that Meredith Mayors Levin is this year's Ruth and Dr. Milton Kahn Emerging Leadership Award honoree. A real estate broker with, with Howard Hanna Real Estate Services in Williamsville, Meredith is a 1999 graduate from Sunny Geneseo with a degree in Fine Arts and Design. She specializes in residential real estate in the Buffalo area and surrounding suburbs, and has locally been nicknamed as the house matchmaker. If you work out at the JCC in Gatsville, you've probably seen Meredith's big smile uh, in her advertisement on the big screens. 
Born and raised in Buffalo, Meredith was thrilled to come back to Buffalo 18 years ago after brief stints in Las Vegas and Boston, where she taught art and worked in residential and, co and commercial art sales. Prior to entering the real estate industry in 2009, Meredith served as the assistant director of the Bureau of Jewish Education, children's program supervisor at the Jewish Community Center of Greater Buffalo, and as the assistant director of Camp Centerland. In addition to being re-elected to serve on the Board of Governors of Federation, Meredith and her husband Ken are the co-chairs of Super Sunday. Meredith also was one of the inaugural participants in the Momentum program, which culminated in a, in a 2019 trip to Israel with other women from the Jewish Buffalo and in partnership with cities around the world. I was lucky to be in this trip with Meredith. Uh, it was two years ago today that we embarked, and uh, having Meredith with us, is, she's a breath of fresh air, and she brings this huge energy wherever she goes. So it was, she, made, she made the trip even more special. The Levins reside in Williamsville and are proud parents of three children, Parker, Charlie, and Archie. They are also members of Congregation Shir Shalom and are thrilled uh, that their children share their love of Jewish life and culture through their involvement with the Jewish Buffalo Teen Initiative, Camp Seneca Lake, and the Madrahim program at the Community Religious School. Meredith, would you join me on stage to say a few words? Thank you so much for honoring me with the Ruth and Milton Kahn Emerging Leadership Award. Uh, when I was told I was receiving this, I was beyond surprised. Uh, I mean, have you really seen the list of past recipients? Such extraordinary women. Uh, I'm extremely touched to be presented with, the, with this award from last year's honoree, my friend, Brenda Feldstein. Uh, Brenda works tirelessly for our community and she's beyond deserving of this leadership award. I am also so honored to call her my friend. Uh, thank goodness for that momentum trip. It really changed our lives. Um, a special mazel tov to my friend Ezra Rich on receiving the Ann and Meyer Rich and Emerging Leadership Award. Uh, the Federation couldn't have chosen a more wonderful and more deserving recipient. From the moment I met Ezra, I knew that he would make a difference here in Buffalo. And boy, has he. Uh, Ezra, Buffalo is really lucky to have you and Sarah and the whole Rich family here in town. Thank you to Rob Goldberg, uh, Randy Morkees, Stacy Black, and Miriam Abramovich for their tireless support and encouragement to stay engaged in our Jewish community. And thanks to Cheryl Stein for roping me into joining the board of the Jewish Federation. Uh, I also want to thank my family, my husband Kenny, my daughter Parker, my sons Charlie and Archie for sharing me with the community and for their love and unconditional support. Uh, thanks to my sister Jessica Altman for tackling this honor a few years ago, ago a few, few years ago and also showing me how it's done. Um, last month I had the pleasure of sitting around a table with Randy, Marquis, Stacy Black, and a handful of other past recipients of this award. Risa Kulik, Leslie Kramer, Susie Katz, Linda Pollock, Brenda Feldstein, and my sister Jessica Altman. As we sat together sipping a lovely glass of wine, which I have to tell you was so lovely because it was I think my first time I had a restaurant outside, um, I listened more than I spoke, which is a, definitely a rarity for anyone who knows me well. Um, we talked about Ruth Khan a bit and stories that were shared about her, her spirit, her kindness, and her accomplishments. Everyone had a story about when they received their award and more importantly, what it meant to them when they did. All of us come from different backgrounds, different family and career paths with different skill sets. And some like Ruth came from different towns or like Brenda from other countries. Uh, but something I realized that we all have in common is that we love this Buffalo Jewish community. We want people to be engaged, we want to help one another. Uh, we want to help see it grow and evolve with the times. We want our community to thrive. As I drove home from that dinner, I decided I needed to learn more about Ruth Kahn Stovra. I did a little digging, and I Googled her. Um, and I stumbled upon a couple of interesting finds. 
One was a book called Jewish Community of Greater Buffalo, punished by, uh, published by Hannah Coatsen in 2013. Hannah, by the way, was a recipient of this very award in 2011. So I thought that was kind of neat. Um, and another was a Mrs. Stovroff's obituary, written by Jean Warner in 2016. Here's what I learned. Ruth Kahn Stovroff volunteered for over seven decades. Seven decades. Uh, she was the first female president of the Jewish Federation of Greater Buffalo and the first female president of the Foundation for Jewish Philanthropies. She was also the president of the Camp Lakeland Association. Makes me happy. Olmsted Center for the Visually Impaired, uh, Children and Family Services, Child and Family Services, excuse me, and the Community Action Organization, among many others. In 2005, she was inducted into the Western New York Women's Hall of Fame, courtesy of the, Jewish, uh, the Foundation for Jewish Philanthropies. Mrs. Stovroff stayed active on boards past her 100th birthday. Talk about something to aspire to. Um, she, was, she also served as a mentor to three generations of women and became beloved in the local Jewish community. Jean wrote that Ruth was um, also known for her smile, her impeccable appearance, her soft-spoken demeanor, and her ever-present twinkle in her eye, which she maintained in her last days. I could be here all night listing Mrs. Stovroff's accomplishments, but I want to focus on that ever-present twinkle that Jean mentioned in her obituary. Because I never had the opportunity to meet Ruth, the description of her just stuck with me. I've always been drawn to people who have a spark, a twinkle, that I often call it. It's a connection that I've come to trust and know that these are my people. The ones who offer more than meets the eye. The ones who get things done and do it with intelligence, drive, selflessness, and always a hint of humor. It always helps. Every woman who sat at that table with me last month at Giancarlo's, along with all the past honorees since 1972, have and had and have had a common goal. We want our Buffalo Jewish community to thrive, and we want to help make it happen together. As I said, when going through all the names of past honorees, I know that I've got really big shoes to fill. I promise to help our community grow and evolve so that we leave a lasting legacy for our children and for future generations. I'm looking forward to doing it with open arms and open mind, and like Ruth, with a twinkle in my eye. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate the honor. And now I would like to invite on the stage Alon Kupferman. We received uh, last year's award. Uh, um, wasn't in person, was virtual. And I just want to say, Ezra Rich, congratulations on the award. It couldn't be more uh, deserving. Thank you, Brenda, and congratulations, Meredith. Ezra Rich is the Ann S. and Dr. Meyer uh, H. Rishan Emerging Leadership Award recipient. He is the Marketing and Communications Manager at Unilin Development Co Company. And in this role, he supports the marketing communications, social media, and public relations initiatives for projects such as Uniland's transformation of the Eastern Hills Mall into a town center and the launch of Hansa Workspace, a co-working shared office facility. Ezra began his career working in Manhattan for two global public relations agencies and added marketing to his skill set at the Princeton Office of Technology Research from SRI International. A CUNY Brooklyn College alumnus Ezra grew up in a small Jewish community in Fairfield, Connecticut, and later lived in a larger Jewish community in Manhattan's Upper West Side. His community involvement is inspired by his parents and late grandparents, who were active in their work in local communities from the synagogue and day school to Israeli charity work. Ezra and his family moved to Buffalo in 2017 when his wife, Rabbi Sarah Rich, accepted the role of executive director at Hillel of Buffalo. And I would say that as a JCC board member and the head of the board, I consider myself fortunate to serve with Sarah on the board, who's phenomenal. Ezra currently serves on the boards of the Buffalo Jewish Federation, Temple Beth Tzedek, the Hebrew Benevolent Loan Association of Western New York. He's also involved in the Buffalo Niagara chapter of the Public Relations Society of America and the Amherst Chamber of Commerce, Toastmasters Club. The Rich family lives in Williamsville in a house she do, or match, made by Meredith. <laughs> With their three daughters, Miriam, Sivan, and Naomi, he is excited, or he is excited for the Jewish education and experiences um, of his daughters 
and they've been active in the community religious school as well. TBT's Bina Enrichment Program, PJ Library Literature, and Camp Centerline. I'm greatly honored to introduce Ezra. If you'd like to come up to the BIMA and say a few words, and I'll present you with your gift. Thank you so much, Alon. Your, your call a few months ago caught me by surprise, the, the best kind of surprise. Uh, building on what Rabbi Sobel shared earlier, in this week's Parsha of Vayigash, we see a major migration as Yaakov, Jacob, and his family travel down from Canaan, from Canaan, to Egypt to reunite with Yosef, with Joseph, and to escape famine. At the beginning of the fifth, fifth Aliyah, the Torah notes that early on their journey, they stopped in Beersheba. According to the Midrash, while Yaakov was there, he cut down cedar trees that were planted by Avram Avinu, by his grandfather Abraham. He did this because he knew that the Jews would ultimately leave Egypt, and he wanted this heirloom wood to be part of the Mishkan, of the tabernacle, as they reconnected to God and headed back to the Promised Land. According to a reflection in Penina Mala Torah, while many attribute their success solely to themselves, Yaakov wanted his descendants to be mindful that they were building upon their ancestors' legacy. On receiving this honor, I want to thank my dear parents and late grandparents, who, as Alan uh, kindly noted, they led by example as very active members of their communities. My late grandmother, the original Miriam Rich, Allah Shalom, often stressed to me the importance of knowing where one, knowing where one came from and how one carries oneself. I want to thank my beloved wife, Sarah. Grandma Rich also liked to point out on many occasions that behind many a great man is an even greater woman. And that's certainly the case with my Azer Konegdo, as well as with the, the love that I have for our dear daughters, for Miriam, Sivan, and Naomi. Five years ago, Sarah and I were drawn to Jewish Buffalo by the community's special history and its promising future. I'm humbled to be recognized by the Federation and join a long list of Rushwin and Khan Emerging Leader honorees whom I greatly respect from Alan and, and Brenda and the, the many who have come before them. When we moved to Buffalo, I was, able, <clears throat> I was eager to also launch my career here with a Buffalo firm, and I'm blessed to work at Uniland Development Company, an organization led and driven by the, by the Montante family's commitment to the community, and I thank them for their support of my volunteer endeavors. Jewish Buffalo and the broader Western New York community are greater than the sum of our parts. The city of good neighbors isn't only a, a collection of warm people, Buffalonians who have made us feel at home in a place where we don't have any immediate family, uh, but it's also a place with many sacred institutions, ones that Sarah and I are proud to be actively involved with today and pledge to support in perpetuity via the Life and Legacy Program. Buffalo has been blessed with many lay and professional leaders who have tended to the needs of the Queen City for many years. This evening, I'm proud to be a part of the new generation of those who will help write the next great chapter as we meet evolving needs guided by our Jewish tradition and inspired by the example of those who came before us. In that vein, I express my mazel tov wishes to my dear friend Meredith Myers-Levin. I remember, um, I think at our, one of our first meetings at Bagel Jay's, she was asking about preschools, and she said, pals, and I thought, pals, and we, I had to learn the, the translation of, of Buffalo accents. It's just still a work in progress. But I'm uh, so blessed to, uh, to have her as a, as a good friend, and as, as you saw, uh, such a wonderful uh, house that she found for us. And I also want to wish a mazel tov to David Feierstein for his dedication with the Foundation for Jewish Philanthropies. I want to thank Rob Goldberg, Shelly Yellen, and the Buffalo Jewish Federation as well as Rabbi Rosenbaum, Marsha Goldstein, and Temple Beth Sedek, Judy Brownstein, and the Hebrew Benevolent Loan Association, and all of the professionals and lay leaders who are working to get together to strengthen Jewish Buffalo as a great community to be a part of, a place of Jewish learning and inspiration for our children, and for all of us as lifelong learners, seekers of Jewish light and community. As we move on from Hanukkah, which led to the rededication of the temple in Jerusalem, may we rededicate ourselves tonight to supporting and participating 
in our beloved community, and may we go collectively, Michael El Chayel, from strength to strength. Thank you. I want to thank Alan and I want to thank Brenda for the beautiful uh, introductions and congratulations again to Ezra and Meredith on your uh, awards and we look forward to your participation and leadership uh, for years to come. At this point in the program I'd like to uh, reintroduce uh, or bring back Jonathan Schechter to the podium. Thank you. Thank you Shelley and a mazel tov with a, with a beautiful uh, presentation that was, a, a, a muzzle tub to Meredith, a muzzle tub to Ezra, and as Hanukkah ends, um, all I can see are their neshamas continuing to burn inside, uh, inside Ezra and inside Meredith as, as, as the tradition of what we're trying to do here keeps on burning and keeps on moving on. Well, I'd like to welcome everyone to the 111th annual meeting of the Foundation for Jewish Philanthropies. I'd like to thank all of our friends who participated in the video and thank you for your support of Jewish Buffalo. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, Allison, for your efforts in leading our Life and Legacy initiative. And thank you for all the folks who are working behind the scenes to bring tonight's event together. Tonight's business meeting will be very short. It is my pleasure again to invite Rabbi Sharon Sobel for the annual remembrance of our donors and our friends who we have lost this past year. Please join me in remembering our dear friends and supporters of the foundation who have passed since the time of our last annual meeting May their memories always spin for our blessing. Dr. Sidney Anthone, Mr. Harvey Benetovich, Ms. Lorelei Benetovich, Mrs. Mrs. Gloria Burzon, Mrs. Pauline Brummer, Mr. Richard Brummer, Mr. Michael C. Berwick, Mr. Harold Cohen, Mr. David Coughlin, Mr. Carl Dobizin, Mrs. Sarah Fink, Mr. Ronald L. Frank, Mrs. Claire L. Gorelick, Mr. Charles Garfinkel, Mrs. Muriel M. Goodman, Mr. Neil S. Goodman, Mr. Charles D. Hahn, Mr. Howard Hofstein, Mrs. Barbara D. Hollander, Mrs. Berna Corin, Mrs. Estelle Leonard, Mr. Mitchell B. Levy, Ms. Eliza Danielle Lippmann, Dr. Robert A. Milch, Mr. J. Rosenthal, Mr. Martin M. Rothschild, Mrs. Frances C. Rumsey, Mr. Leonard Sadkin, Mrs. Annette Schwartz, Mr. Donald P. Sheldon, Mr. Hyman Schumann, Mr. Robert B. Summerstein, Mr. Avram B. Sturman, Mrs. Ann Alfred Serdam, Mrs. Sally S. Teibel, Dr. Mindy G. Wyman. Sichron Livracha. Thank you, Rabbi Sobel. May their memories be for a blessing. Please join me in welcoming my good friend and a good mentor in helping me transition to the presidency of the Foundation for Jewish Philanthropies, Donald Kohnstam, chair of the Foundation's Governance Committee. Thank you, Don. Good evening. On behalf of the Governance Committee of the Foundation for Jewish Philanthropies, I'd like to announce the following. Our officers for the 2022 year President Jonathan Schechter, Vice President Gretchen Gross, Vice President Allison Keene, Vice President Peter Weinman, Secretary Craig Small, and Treasurer Daniel Kester. I'd also like to welcome our new trustees to the board, uh, Bruce Levine, Jordana Mazel, Sanath Rajapasi, Melissa Stevener, and Richard Steinberg. 
and to thank our outgoing trustees, Kim babbitt Unati, Paul Michaels, Justin Reich, Ken Rogers, Ken Schumann, David Stark, Lauren Starnhart, and Rick Tybe. And now I'd like to call Jonathan back to discuss our Foundation Leadership Endowment Award. Thanks, John. As you may have heard, uh, we have lost Lauren Steinhardt as a lane leader, but we've gained him as our senior manager of client relations. Uh, we brought him over to the dark side to become part of our professional staff. And thank you so much, Lauren, for coming over. You've, you've been a big part of our, of our professional staff and leadership team. And now for our favorite part, the Foundation's Endowment Leadership Award. It's given in recognition of extraordinary service, generosity, and commitment to the Buffalo Jewish community. I can think of no person who better embodies these values. And while he can't be here tonight, please join me in virtually welcoming David Firestein from his home in Sarasota, Florida. I'm Irv Levy, the Executive Director for the Foundation for Jewish Philanthropies. Tonight, I am honored to recognize David Feierstein with the Endowment Leadership Award, the Foundation's highest honor. This award is in recognition of extraordinary service, generosity, and commitment to the Buffalo Jewish community. We'll present the award to David in person during the summer of 2022. In the meantime, David will share a few words about his inspiration for community service, and some of the causes that move him. Good evening, everyone from beautiful Sarasota. Uh, I'm thrilled to uh, be honored tonight, and my family is, is as well. And uh, really what inspired me to get involved with the foundation and giving back was how I was raised from my parents, loving and uh, Sadaka and just a beautiful family. And that's what really inspired me. And I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm thrilled to be involved with the various agencies and to give back to the community. I was especially moved by JFS, Jewish Family Services Organization, because they, uh, really give back to the community in so many ways for mental health, for creating jobs, helping people with housing and uh, clothing and just their overall involvement. And then with uh, the Jewish Center, I wanted to be involved with because I was always a lifelong member and it was important to keep that in good standing for now and in the future. And with Camp Centerland, I wanted to be involved as it, uh, as I went there as a young child, and I have fond memories of that. And with Hillel, I just thought it would be a great thing to uh, be involved with that program as they uh, too get involved. Are, are so involved with the student community and uh, just thought it was the right thing to do. And with uh, the Federation, they have so many wonderful programs, uh, far too numerous to uh, discuss, but, and I'm, I'm grateful that my children are gonna be part of this because they will be the future and they're very excited to be in this program as well. David, uh, do you have a message for our Jewish Buffalo community? Yes. Uh, the most important message I could give back, send back to Buffalo and the Jewish community is that I feel everyone should get involved in creating their own legacy because it's so important for now and in the future I'm looking forward to working with others who would like to discuss their legacy plans. And uh, I look forward to seeing everyone back in Buffalo in the summer. And I'm really 
again, myself, my family, we're so thrilled to be involved with this program and to see it come to fruition. And we see the results so far are uh, on the upswing and it's only gonna get better. I think that David can get his award at Camp Centerland next summer, since he is so fond of camp. I'm gonna turn it over to Shelley. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, it's really been special for me to be up here this evening, and it's particularly special for me to be up here with Jonathan. Uh, to be here with a, a leader like Jonathan and someone who is uh, been a friend for so long and a, a friend that's like family. It's been special for me and thank you. I'd also like to thank Allison and Howard. The stories you shared tonight on the Riches, the Rosenhocks, the Kesters, Gretchen and Esther are inspiring. So too are the stories of our many friends and neighbors who have already joined them in preserving their legacy and ensuring a vibrant and secure Jewish Buffalo for the future. Thank you. I'd like to turn it back over to Jonathan. If, if you have not already done so, please, please make a legacy commitment. When you hear from an agency, if you hear from the Federation, if you hear from the Foundation, take our call, let's sit down, let's talk about the Life and Legacy Program and what we're trying to do here in Western New York. We're trying to create a new culture. We're trying to pretend and create a situation where the community is part of our family and we need to think of them as we think about our legacy gifts and commitments. Please give us a call at any time. Call your friends at the foundation, call us at the federation, call the agencies, and call your synagogues. And of course, good night and go Bills.